Hey lady, I know that as a business owner and as a leader, you want to make life better for the people you love and for those who need your help. But here's the thing. Business is a spiritual game. Leadership is a spiritual game. Empowerment is an inside job. And empires, well, they get built by careful design. And the problem is neither school nor family or even good old intuition teach you how to win the game. So twice a month or more on this podcast, we're teaching you how to become the architect of your business and how to develop that mindset that's necessary for you to execute on your dreams. Because ladies, mastery and mindset are the jet fuel you need to ignite your own on fire empire. Let's go. In this episode, we're going to answer your burning legal questions. And that means I've got to give you the obligatory legal disclaimer. The information presented in this podcast is not intended to be legal advice. To the contrary, this content is for informational and entertainment purposes only. You know what I'm saying. I'm not your lawyer. For legal advice, call a great lawyer. Whether you call me or someone else, legal advice happens when the lawyer is given the opportunity to hear your specific situation and give you advice based on your unique facts. So do not rely on the content you see or hear here for your own situation. Besides, I may misspeak or you may misunderstand or I may have had insomnia or a momentary outbreak of insanity. The bottom line is, mistakes happen, so don't rely. And with that said, it's time to answer your questions. So I have another question uh, that we also got through our Instagram account. Okay, so here's a new one, and it's from Christy. Okay, Christy. Okay. All right, Christy, bring it on. Okay, let's hear it. Hi, Kelly. This is Christy. I have a question for you. I'd like to start a discussion with my husband about the potential of us separating, but I am concerned because he reacts to any type of criticism or things that he views as being negative toward him or as an attack on him. So I'm just concerned about how I should bring this up and where we should start our discussion. And by the way, he refuses to get counseling. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's really a good yeah. one. And I love this because, um, you know, this is the reality of the situation. Um, it's not necessarily right. the law side of it, but this is where, you know, with divorce and family law and all of this c- comes into play. Um, but we're not, you know, nobody teaches us how to do this kind of stuff. So it's kind of like relational 101. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so, so, Christy, you want to talk about... Um, possibly going through a legal separation. Um, And what I hear in that, Jose, is when people will ask about a legal separation, and then you heard Christy talked about, uh, she paired it towards the end, by the way, he he hasn't wanted to go to um, marital counseling. So I'm going to guess, Christy, that maybe you you don't want to go for um, divorce at this point in time. You want to try legal separation because you're hoping that perhaps um, your husband will come along and decide he wants to work on the marriage. So it just sounds like, you know, obviously I'm, I'm guessing there, but usually that's the reason for a legal separation is with the hope to see if we can possibly make some headway and, and reconcile here, which is great. Um, it, and I, it, yeah, I want to just, there's a couple of things here. So I'll get to the how do I start this conversation and how do I lead. But I first want to back up and talk for a second about making sure you are clear on um, what you can control and what you can't control. Um, Because a lot of times when we're going for legal separation instead of just hitting divorce from the outgo, um, and especially where you've got someone who's not been willing to do marital counseling it's kind of a can be a veiled form of an ultimatum right does that Mm -hmm. make sense um and ultimatums in our experience they don't work i mean they really don't work uh, because that's about a control piece um and jose do you remember um i don't remember what page it was in in 
the book in, in my book victim is not my name no victim is not your name victim <laughs> is not your name or my name victim is not your name um it's the circles of influence right do you remember okay I do. so we'll figure it out and put it in the show notes you know where <laughs> it is in the book but i talk about this and i actually have a nice diagram designed by yours truly over here we'll put it we'll put it up right here oh so okay there it is there it is <laughs> <laughs> the magic, the of, magic of video yeah. editing, right? So, so these are, in, in fact, the way we describe it here and what you're seeing is we call them empowerment zones and disempowerment zones. So what you're looking at looks like a target. And the very smallest circle in the middle is what you actually truly, truly control, 100% control in your life. And if you think of what you absolutely control in your life and you're real, realistic, it's very little. It's very little, like you can usually control what you decide to put on in the morning, what time you leave the house, things of that nature. But uh, those are very few and far between things that you have 100% control over in, the, in life. Mm -hmm. And that's where there is absolute, when you're operating in that zone, you have a lot of, uh, you're empowered, right? Because you have a lot of control over those things. Then the next um, circle you'll notice on the diagram is things that you have no absolute control over, but you have heavy duty influence over. Heavy duty influence. So something like this might look like when our children are babies, um, we, we, we have absolute, just about absolute control over, you know, whether they are in a clean diaper or not, or whether they're getting fed or not. As they grow a bit older, like, when they are, let's say, they go off to college or they're in high school. Now we don't have direct control, like absolute control over them, but perhaps if they're not getting the right grades or they're not doing the things that we think they ought to do, we are saying things of this nature like, you're not getting your allowance, there's no money for gas in your car, I'm taking your car away from you, any number of things. We have a tremendous amount of influence. And so that's still an empowerment zone, although not quite as empowering as the absolute control circle. And then as we get to the outer two circles, um, the next circle are things that we have zero control over and minimal, like I mean minimal influence over. Um, voting might be one of those right mm -hmm. <laughs> so voting might be right so some people just don't vote at all because they feel like they're in the outer circle no control no influence whatsoever maybe you're voting for something in a very small election in a small hometown and mm -hmm. you're one of 10 people voting um you'll have a lot more influence but you still can't control the outcome so that's what that circle is about and then the final outer circle is where you, things that you have zero control and zero influence over now, if you think about something that you're worrying about, things that we tend to worry about, just pick one. Think of it, something you've been worrying about. You know, how am I gonna pay Uncle Sam? I don't know if I can pay that tax bill or I don't know, whatever, you, you just name it. What, where on the diagram is it? Is it in something you absolutely can control or have huge influence over or is it in those outer two zones? Most of the time, things we worry about are worries because we can't do a lot about them and they're in those disempowerment zones. So what I encourage you to do is very much think about what is your reason for, for wanting to go for legal separation? What are you hoping for? And if it's a result that truly is in the outer two circles that are the disempowerment zones, things you have no control over and minimal influence or no influence over, you might want to rethink that because that can be very disempowering and frustrating. Okay, so back to the question. So if you want to go for legal separation, you want to bring this up. First of all, like I said in the last, uh, answering the last question, mm -hmm. it never hurts to go to a therapist and run this through a therapist um, through their filter on how to approach someone who is personalizing everything. Okay, um, and he or she is going to give you some good advice on how to address, especially the person who is the therapy averse <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, spouse. Okay, so there's that, Christy. The next thing is somebody is always personalizing and taking it as an attack. You want to go into that discussion with facts, 
okay? Facts. And so what are the facts? The facts are, here's what we know for sure, right? And, and not feelings at the moment, just facts. And write it down and practice it in advance. Um, neither one of us is happy. That's it, right? It doesn't need to be why you're not happy. Because okay? you never take out the trash and keep your promises and you gamble all our retirement away. Okay? We don't need to go there at the moment. So neither one of us is happy. Um, whatever the facts are, right? Um, we're, we're roommates rather than spouses and we have been for a long time. Um, I'm taking a different career path and I know that's not what you support and you are more interested in doing this over here which is just you know it's not something that's within my my zone of how I want to live right and just list the facts of why you want a legal separation and if you want a legal separation and not a divorce right now because you're not really sure if a divorce is the right thing for you and your spouse and your family, list that as a fact too. I wanna to explore legal separation to see if there are things that we might explore here, whether it's through therapy or other means that will tell us that this can be fixed or not fixed, reconciled or not reconciled. But lead again um, with facts and with love. Because let's face it, you've been married to this person. I don't know. She didn't say. Chris, you didn't say. She didn't how, say how long. How yeah, long? But, um, but you got married. Most people have been married. You know, more than a couple of years. Sometimes not. But um, especially when we're looking at legal separation, it tells me you've probably been married a while and you've got a lot invested in it. And so treat that person with that respect of listen. I respect you, and I love you. Um, but I think we owe it to ourselves to accept the reality of what's been happening and we each deserve to be happy. And, and that's why I'm doing this. And just know that, yeah, he might come back and personalize it all because mm -hmm. what you will be doing, 100% guarantee, Christy, is you're going to bruise the ego. People who personalize stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and take everything personally, they're very usually very hard on themselves, right? Um, and it's their ego being involved. And that's a hard way to live, by the way. Um, being led around by, by your ego and your emotions. Um, and of course you have feelings. I mean, that's just normal. But this isn't really the place to get into all of that. The place to get into the feelings is in a therapist's office where it can be properly managed, right? But I would put a time limit on the, limit on the conversation and just know you're not gonna control his response. Expect the ego to show up. And it's going to want to take you over here, right? It's gonna wanna take you down these rabbit mm -hmm. holes of well you and you're a liar and whatever all that drama is. And your role is to come back to the facts and say, I appreciate that's how you feel. And I acknowledge this is a painful situation, but believe me, I'm not interested in running you down or degrading you or any of those things. I just am looking at the reality. And here's what my next steps are going to be. Now, expect that he's gonna go down this other road, right? And that's when you, listen for a very short time and say, thank you, you know, I, I, I appreciate you sharing how you feel with me about this, but here's the next steps, you know, so either I'm going to a lawyer's office or I've filed or whatever it is, um, and just make it simple and keep it short and be ready to exit the room because you don't need to turn this into a big, long emotional to-do, um, nor do you need to subject yourself to that but always be willing to go into a therapist's office if we're talking about legal separation. So um, that's, I think, you know, one of the more productive approaches, but you have to just really be careful about not, I mean, and that's why putting time limits on it and maybe even having a conversation in public, like at a Starbucks coffee house, if that's not too insensitive, right. you know, you have to kind of gauge that, but don't let it become a big emotion. You, you got to, be able to kindly um, 
exit the scene and not subject yourself to a bunch of, you know, unproductive stuff. So that's my advice on that. That's great. All right. All right. So if you have questions that you would like us, well, mainly Kelly to answer. <laughs> well, you can be. <laughs> but an, I can be a part can of be that an as well. Armchair pundit. <laughs> uh, sure, absolutely. But no, seriously, if you have questions you'd like us to answer, uh, absolutely send us a direct message either on Instagram at Kelly Bennett underscore. I'm sorry, no, it's ESQ. Just no, yeah. no underscore. No underscore. So it's Kelly Bennett ESQ, and also on Facebook at Kelly Bennett ESQ. And uh, send us your questions, and we'll read them. We'll listen to them uh, if you leave a, ve- a message. If you'd like to call and leave uh, a voicemail uh, mm-hmm. message, we'll play it out loud on the episode, and we'll answer the question. Yep. And the number, I'll put it right here, and you can see that phone number. Uh, and it'll only go to voicemail. No one's going to answer that phone, so don't expect a, someone to answer it. But feel free to leave it there, and we'll answer it live uh, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, and it, absolutely. I, I, I do count it a privilege to, to help. Um, there's just a lot to think about in these situations. So, yeah. all right, well, that'll wrap it for this time with my legal hat is officially off. <laughs> and um, anything else? That's it. All right, so, hey, Empire Builders. Um, It's been a pleasure to serve you, and until next time, live with gusto and ignite your empire.